So we didn't do any boat work this week. Uh, we're going to kind of collect ourselves uh, between stopping working on the doghouse and moving on to the next project. Uh, so we'd just like to stop for a moment and say thank you to all the Patreons, the subscribers, the people who comment and like and watch the videos. It is ex very surprising and um, we feel really lucky to have all of you joining us on our weird and crazy adventure and so thank you again very very much we're we're happy to have you here with us and uh this week we're going to show this little interview that we did uh with our friend john uh and we'll get back to boat work next week my name is matt follow along as i turn duracell the legendary ocean racing sailboat into a comfortable cruising home First, we'd like to thank our Patreons uh, from this week. Uh, well, actually, I need to make a correction to one from last week. Alan uh, did not attend the Naval Academy. He was stationed there at the Naval Hospital and got to take part in the sailing training that the midshipmen uh, took part in on the Looters 44 Yalls. So uh, thanks again, Alan, and we always enjoy chatting with you. Thank you so much to George, who shared this photo with us of his first boat build in 1969. It's on Donner Lake in California when he was only 14 years old. Thank you so much, George. And thanks to Brian from Oregon. He's a retired electrician and spends lots of time boating and sailing on the Columbia River. So thanks very much, Brian. Thank you to Greg in Ohio, who is a semi-retired aeronautical engineer uh, with a love of or a fascination with aerodynamics and a lifelong love for sailing. And thanks to Berend, who's from the Netherlands. And Sorry if we're mispronouncing your name. Yeah. And uh, lastly, Barbara, Martin, David, and Ed. We really appreciate everybody who's joined the community. And if you're interested in joining, uh, you can go to our page, The Duracell Project, at uh, patreon.com. So. Thanks again. I guess beyond. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I've got a ton of questions that I've been wanting to ask. Um, first and foremost, though, I want to start with just a brief introduction of who you guys are, what your name is, where you're from, um, and maybe just really quickly what brought you to this part of the world. Go ahead. Me first? Mm -hmm. Okay. My name is Janneke. I grew up in the Bay Area in California, um, between the Bay Area and Oslo, Norway. My dad's Norwegian, so we moved back and forth a little bit. And in 2011, I moved up to Washington to go to grad school in um, science education, outdoor science education, and had every intention of moving back to California, but then I met this sailor dude, and the rest is history. All right, and the sailor dude. Yeah, I'm I'm Matt. I grew up in Idaho, and um, uh, I went to college at Evergreen in Olympia when I was a, uh, in 2005. I think I came here, and uh, that's where I learned to sail, and I've been here ever since. Tell me a little bit about your your sailing career. What got you started in in this activity and yeah, so uh, I went to Evergreen, and there was a program that I was taking there called the Arts of the Sailor. This was when I was like 20, 21 years old, and it was on a 44-foot wooden yawl. Uh, it was actually one of the original um, Naval Academy training vessels. It was built in like 1920 or something. It was an awesome boat to learn to sail on. And so... Um, yeah, I did a couple semesters on that boat, and then I started, there was a couple of kids in my class that were racing, and so I got into racing. And that's when it like, really hooked me on sailing, was getting into the racing. And so I um, did a ton of racing uh, my last few years in college, and then ended up getting on a boat and sailed down, um, just cruising along with some guys on a bigger boat down through Mexico and Central America and stuff like that. So that was kind of my learning how to sail and cruising and all that stuff story so and yeah. his mom matt's mom likes to tell a story that she got a call when matt was like 21 and it was during this class at evergreen and matt called her 
and it was after a day of sailing, and he said, um, Mom, I found my thing in life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally remember making that call. Because it was, it was pretty, yeah, life-changing. How about, how about you? Um, I got into sailing through Matt. So, um, you know, I, I always have loved being on boats. And um, I had a, when I lived in Norway as a child, my best friend, her family was a boat family. Um, power boat, but we would take like weekend trips from Oslo to Sweden um, across the North Sea and I just absolutely loved it. Um, I loved sleeping in on the boat and swimming out in the middle of the ocean between Sweden and Norway and um, and then uh, my first job out of college was working on a boat for the Audubon Society taking people to see breeding puffins in Maine and so I was like the Autobahn naturalist aboard this boat and got to spend all day out in the water pointing out seabirds to people. Um, but I didn't get into sailing before I met Matt and then really got into sailing when we decided to quit our jobs and sail around the Pacific for two years. Tell me about that decision. So first, I guess, jump into what, what sailing around the Pacific was for you guys. And then uh, I also want to hear about just what the thought process was. Why did you do that? That's such a crazy thing. Um, so either one of you can speak to that. Um, well, you can. Yeah, so we, like, w when we first moved in together, we had just bought our first boat together, which was our 40-foot Sloop Louise. And I had always known that I needed to go out and do a cruise around the Pacific. And I think I asked Yanni very early on in our relationship if she would be game for doing something like that and I, I got, said yes yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah so yeah. so yeah we bought a boat um and uh we kind of had like a five-year plan to go cruising and once we we had the boat earlier than we thought we would and um and so over happy hour one afternoon we decided that you know, we had the boat and it was, we could get it ready earlier than we thought we could. And so we left, I think the next year, um, to cruise around, do our big cruise. So. Um, yeah, we were having happy hour in Seattle and we, and we were like, okay, we've got this five year plan. And I think it was me. I was like, why five years? Why not one year? And so we did it. Matt worked his butt off getting Louise ready. Um, to be an ocean cruiser because she wasn't an ocean cruiser at that time and um, I Continued making money teaching and um, and then hey, we hey, left. I'm sorry. No, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Hey, quit um, okay, So yeah, so we we sailed down the west coast we left in the fall of 2017 sailed down the coast of Washington, Oregon, California. A Western Baja and into the Sea of Cortez. Where we spent uh, an entire winter, about six months. Um, and then in the spring of 2017, we uh, did the puddle jump and went three weeks across the Pacific to the Marquesas. Okay, we finally made it. This is Tao Tao Bay in, on Nuka Hiva in the Marquesas Islands, 2,700 miles from La Paz, Baja, California. And we made it in about 18 days and four hours, going on four hours. Um, and then we got to spend an entire, almost an entire year in French Polynesia. So we went from the Marquesas to the Tuamotus to the Society Islands um, and just bopped around. Um, it was awesome. Matt, you want to show how the, the traditional cruiser drinks the coconut? This is the wrong way to drink coconut. So there, <laughs> you packed a hole in it. It's better if you have better tools. Well, no, this is the right tool. It's just not going to do it. You stay more practice. <laughs> and then we debated whether we'd go south to New Zealand or stick to our original plan, which was to do a, a big loop. 
and decided to stick to the original plan. So we sailed back up to, Ho or sailed north to Hawaii, spent the summer in Hawaii, um, where Matt got roped into building a traditional Polynesian catamaran. Uh, well, not traditional, a uh, modern version of a Polynesian voyaging boat. Mm -hmm. And then we spent the summer going up through the islands and then back across the ocean to Seattle. You had a boat that sounded like it was in great shape to do anything you wanted to do with it. Um, what was the impetus to move away from that boat? What, why not just stick with that boat? Uh, well, even before we had Louise, I knew that I wanted to get a boat at some time in my life that was basically... I had talked about wanting to build a boat, like, totally from the ground up, but, um, I don't know, I, I kind of lost interest in building, like, the hull itself, and I always wanted to, like, totally fit out a boat to my own specifications, to, like, what I thought it would be a really great cruising boat. And Louise was really cool because it was pretty basic when we got it, and so I got to do a lot of modifications on my own. Um, and that kind of helped me realize that I really, really enjoyed doing that. And so we used Louise hard for those, however, we used it, we had Louise for five years, something like that, and did a ton of work to the boat and really, you know, put it through its paces and, like, figured out what it could and couldn't do. And um, at the same time, I was also doing a lot of reading and um, just trying to figure out what made the best cruising boat and read books by Dashu and, you know, got to spend time on Graham's boat, Dog Bark, which is another Open 60, and um, the Trimbles on their, um, what was that, Atlantic 42 catamaran that's just a super fast you know, super comfortable, and, but it's not like a super yacht, also. It's a pretty, like, practical cruising home. And so, um, yeah, the, uh, I was looking for something like this because it was just a clean slate, and I wanted to, to build something that was exactly what I wanted, so. But the two-year cruise that we took, I think, really, like, got us thinking about what do we like about Louise, what do we not like about Louise. Um, you know, every time we got to an anchorage, Matt was like pointing out boats and attributes that he liked or didn't like on boats. So it was like this two-year process of coming up with like what would be the dream cruiser. But we also loved Louise. We always came back to Louise and we're like, we like Louise better. Yeah, we'd go on people's, like, I don't know, some people had, like, you know, super fancy cruising boats. And we'd come back and be like, nah, Louise is better. <laughs> so we, we really loved Louise. And, uh, and a lot of Louise, Duracell is inspired by a lot of Louise's attributes. Yeah. Well, so let's chat about this boat that we keep circling around. Um, Louise? Yeah. No, no, no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Louise is <Yeah>. gone. <laughs> currently and maybe soon to be formally known as Duracell. Um, yeah, what, what, are the, you know, what are the origin stories? Okay, this is chapter two of uh, the documentary called The Cruiser. And this afternoon, the cruiser is in his natural habitat, the sailboat. He's got his sights on that beach. That's where we're going. And Poopy's along for the adventure. Poopy, what do you think, Mapaz? What do you think? 